Good morning and welcome to First United Church. Pastor Tony is feeling under the weather today. He would have loved to have been here, but he couldn't come in, so I will be leading the service. <laughs> Thank you. Our uh, accompanist will be Maxine, and Amanda Romaine is in back with the video, and Prescott as well is recording. Um, the announcements are that the Jump and Jehovah, Jeho excuse me, Jump and Jehoshaphat's concert will be at the Graham United Methodist Church this Sunday at six. Um, bring a lawn chair, if and if the weather is, is not good, um, it will be indoors and a free will offering will be taken for Haiti. The Women's Book Club will begin meeting in October. If you're interested in participating in that, please contact Amanda Romaine. Um, Bible study will begin on Tuesday, October 5th. Uh, conversation, coffee and conversation will begin on Wednesday, October 6th at 10. Um, Sunday school will begin on, on October 10th. And on Sunday, October 3rd, we will have new member Sunday where we will welcome several new members. That will also be World Communion Sunday, fall cleanup, potluck picnic, potluck picnic, and there will be more details on that in the emails to come this week. And if you have any questions, you're so welcome to call the office. Does anyone else have any announcements? Let's pause for a moment of reflection. Please rise and join me for the call to worship and the prayer of invocation. Enter and worship God in all glory. The revelation of God is whole and pulls our lives together. The signposts of God are clear and point out the, I, I, the life maps of God are true, showing the way to joy. The directions of God are plain and easy on the eyes. Who better to rely upon than our God? God's reputation is pure gold with a lifetime guarantee. The decisions of God are accurate down to the nth degree. God's word is better than a diamond, better than a diamond set between emeralds. God's word is sweeter than strawberries in spring, better than red, ripe strawberries. But how will we find our way? How will we know the true path? God's word warns us of danger and directs us to hidden treasure. God's word lights our way and is a beacon guiding us throughout our days. So let us come and begin a new day a day that the Lord has made. These are the words in my mouth. These are what I pray. Accept them when I place them on the morning altar. O oh God, my rock, amen. The opening hymn is, Prayer is the Soul's Sincere Desire on, in the United Methodist Hymnal, page number 492, or the words are on the screen. the 
may be seated. Please join me in the prayer of confession. God, who hears all our prayers, hear us now as we confess our sins to you. We are impatient and fail to wait for you, Lord of our salvation. We are greedy and do not share the abundance you have shared with us. We see suffering and turn away. We see pain and fail to act. We see death and destruction in our midst, and we turn in fear, only causing more death and destruction. Clean our slate, God. Forgive us our sins, those which we knowingly do and those which are blind spots we cannot see. Use us for good and invigorate our faith that we would trust in your grace, mercy, and love. That we would trust in the words of James when he tells us, the prayer of faith will save the sick and the Lord will raise them up. And anyone who has committed sins will be forgiven. Amen. Hear these words of assurance. Indeed, let us hear assurance from James that the prayer of the righteous is powerful and effective. So stand firm in your prayers that when you confess your sins before God, you are forgiven and believe in the eternal everlasting love of God Almighty. Because of social, because of social distance, distancing, we will uh, share God's peace in prayer and communion together. The scripture readings this morning will be read by Buck O'Quinn. Thank you. 
I guess this helps, doesn't it? Well, speaking of cleanup next Sunday, um, I would again reiterate that we could use all the help we can get. Um, it's not going to take long, and we have a project design, and so many hands make short work. Just bring a rake and gloves, and um, we want to get some stuff cleaned up and placed on my trailer. It helps if you have description in front of you. Our first reading comes from First Kings chapter seventeen, verses seventeen through twenty four. After this, the son of the woman, the mistress of the house, became ill. His illness was so severe that there was no breath left in him. She then said to Elijah, What have you against me, O man of God? You have come to me to bring my sin to remembrance and to cause the death of my son. But he said to her, Give me your son. He took him him from her bosom, carried him up into the upper chamber where he was lodging, and laid him on his own bed. He cried out to the Lord, O Lord, my God, have you brought calamity even upon the widow with whom I am staying by killing her son? Then he stretched himself upon the child three times and cried out to the Lord, O oh Lord, my God, let this child's life come into him again. The Lord listened to the voice of Elijah, and the life of the child came into him again, and he revived. Elijah took the child and brought him down from the upper chamber into the house and gave him to his mother. Then Elijah said, See, your son is alive. So the woman said to Elijah, Now I know that you are a man of God, and the word of the Lord is in your mouth. The second reading comes from the book of James, chapter 5, verses 7 through 16. Be patient, therefore, beloved, until the coming of the Lord. The farmer waits for the precious crop from the earth, being patient with it until it receives the early and late rains. You must also be patient. Strengthen your hearts, for the coming of the Lord is near. Beloved, do not grumble against one another, so that you may not be judged. See? The judge is standing at the doors. As an example of suffering and patience, beloved, take the prophets who spoke in the name of the Lord. Indeed, we call ourselves blessed, those who show endurance. You have heard of the endurance of Job, and you have seen the purpose of the Lord, how the God is compassionate and merciful. Above all, my brothers and sisters, do not swear either by heaven, by earth, or by any other oath. But let your yes be yes, and your no be no, so that you may not fall under condemnation. Or any among you suffering, they should pray. Or any cheerful, they should sing songs of praise. Or any among you sick, they should call for the elders of the church 
and have them pray over them, anointing them with oil in the name of the Lord. The prayer of faith will save the sick, and the Lord will raise them up, and anyone who has committed sins will be forgiven. Therefore, confess your sins to one another and pray for one another so that you may be healed. The prayer of the righteous is powerful and effective. The second hymn is called, What a Friend We Have in Jesus, the United Methodist Hymnal, page 526. will not have a children's message today. The gospel readings will be read by Buck O'Quinn. Our gospel reading is from the book of Mark, chapter 9, verses, verses 38 through 42. John said to him, Teacher, we saw someone casting out demons in your name, and we tried to stop him, because he was not following us. But Jesus said, do not stop him. For no one who does a deed of power in my name will be able soon afterward to speak evil of me. Whoever is not against us is for us. For I truly tell you, whoever gives you a cup of water to drink, because you bear the name of Christ, will by no means lose the reward. If any of you put a stumbling block before one of these little ones who believe in me, it would be better for you if a giant millstone were hung around your neck and you were thrown into the sea. The word of the Lord.
The sermon has been recorded. Don't forget to pray. But don't be ashamed to pray. And don't be too proud. How to pray because prayer prayer changes things prayer changes things I don't care how dark it look for you I don't care what what they done said to you I don't care what the verdict is I don't care what the haters say prayer change things I'm talking to a girl that, I grew up on a block, man, that it didn't breed success. A lot of people on our block ain't here no more, man. I grew up in a place, man, that was, that was you had to be something else you come up out of there. Prayer changes things. I was told I would never be nothing Prayer changes things. I flunked out of school. Prayer changes things. I'm on my third marriage, lost everything I've owned twice. I've been homeless and lived in a car for three years. Prayer changes things. The cool thing about prayer is the one thing that's available to everybody at any given time. Do you know that God ain't ever too, he ain't ever too busy for you? You know that God actually knows who you are? Do you know that God actually created you to converse with him? Do you know that God would actually love to hear from you? Do you know that I like talking to him even when I don't really need nothing? Quit playing with this here. You're not going to make it without God. If you've tried it so far, tell me how that's working out for you. It sucked, don't it? You need God. Don't, don't you think I got here without him. I've needed him every step of the way. If it wasn't for God, I wouldn't even be standing here today. Quit being ashamed about it and worrying about who looking. Go somewhere by yourself today and tell God you need some help. Tell him that you're just tired of trying to figure it out for yourself. You can't be tripping with my walk with him because my path ain't been like yours. This is my version of being saved. All you got to do is get your own version. You ain't got to change. God work with you. God take anybody that want to be saved and he saved. So just like old people used to say, I'm just a nobody trying to tell everybody about somebody that can save anybody. Two things, my dream and my faith. Faith is the belief in things that you cannot see. You can never lose faith. That's the key. You have to believe in something that you can't see. You have to believe when you can't, when you don't see no way how. You have to buckle down and keep believing. God is always coming. Here's the deal. The moment you ask God for something, he boxes it up and he ships it to you. Here's the problem with the package. He never gives you the date that is going to arrive. It's going to come. He just don't tell you when. If he told you when, it would destroy the relationship that's required to have an abundant life, which is faith. If God told you you were going to be rich in August of 2021, do you know how crazy you would talk to people from now until then? Because you know on August 21, I'm going to be rich. But he don't tell you when the package is going to arrive. So here's the deal. He wants you to stay in faith to receive the package because he only delivers to Faith Street. If you step off over here to I Don't See How Boulevard, he don't ship there. If you get over here to I Don't See How Circle, he does not ship there. 
he only sends the boxes to Faith Street. So when he sends it and you have moved off Faith Street, the package gotta go back. It's just like UPS or the post office. If they send you a box and you ain't home, they take it back. That's how it works, man. Let me tell y'all something. Being successful is not a magic trick. You just have to learn the principles of success. I ain't got no degree. I got nothing like that to tell you about. I didn't finish school, I flunked out of school, I'm on my third marriage, lost everything I've owned twice. Been homeless, lived in the car. I am telling you, your education ain't got nothing to do with it. No, man, it's your dreams and visions. A man without a dream or vision shall perish. It's what God puts in your imagination for you to have. Everything God wants you to have, he puts it in your imagination. Albert Einstein said, imagination is everything. It's to preview the life's coming attractions. Everything you imagine is God showing you a preview of a coming attraction he has for you. And he puts it in your imagination so you can see what he got for you. So if you've been imagining that you're going to be rich one day, it's because God wants you to be rich. Now, when you going to ask him for it and are you going to wait for it to happen? Or are you going to lose faith? Here what Christians mess up at. Well, I guess it wasn't the Lord's will. Who are you? How you know what God's will is? It all happens at an appointed time. But you have to stay in faith for the appointed time to happen for you. I've been wanting to be on TV since I was 10 years old. You know how old I was before I got on TV? 38. 38, 28 years after I wrote it on the paper. I won't be on TV. It took me 28 years to get on TV but it happened at an appointed time. I just never gave up the faith. I kept going because I ain't know how to quit. Because I know if I quit, it cannot happen. If you stay with it, you have no idea what can happen for you. You can't quit because get hard. This dude that lost his legs, he's still, he still funky with it. You can't quit because you got your leg. What you tripping for? You, you can't quit, man got to stay with it. Somebody having it way harder than you and they didn't give up. You're tripping, man. Get yourself together. God got a great life for you. I'm telling you, God got a plan for you that's so out of sight, it would trip you out. All you got to do is ask him for it and wait on it and be willing to work. Faith without works is there. That's all you got to do. You don't need no education. I flunked out of school. You know how many people I got working for me that got degrees? Everybody how I got a degree. Because I know I ain't that smart. But I got money for you. Bro, you got what I don't have. I'm, you gonna take that 150 and help me get this billion? I got 154 billion. How God give me this and he won't give it to you? Look at me, I've been up here cussing, I've made mistakes. But God don't ask you for your perfection. He asks you for your consistency. There's none perfect, no, not one. I'm going to give you the two scriptures that changed my entire life. Now, I had heard these scriptures growing up, but it didn't, it didn't sit with me until I was homeless. The first scripture, you have not because you ask not. Now listen to me. I cannot tell you how important that single scripture is. A lot of the problems I was having, and you may be having just like me, is because what I was asking God for was the wrong stuff. I kept going to him too small. I was praying for stuff that really didn't need that much of a prayer. You really think God don't know you need another job? He know all of that. But if you don't ask him for it, he can't, God don't give you what you want. He give you what you believe. See, you've been blowing it. If you up your ask, he ups his gill. That's his promise. You have not, cause you ask not. Lord, help me fix my car so I can make it to work. Stop praying over these raggedy cars. Why don't you ask God for a car that don't need fixing? Oh, you think that's too big for him? Is that it? So you don't ask this great God for big stuff because you don't see how you can get it. 
You're not supposed to see how you can get it. You're just supposed to ask him for it. See, the how-to is none of your business. You keep getting in the way of the blessing because you all up in the how-to part of it. Show me the scripture where he tells you to figure out how to do anything. He don't ask you the how-to nothing. Write the vision and make it plain. Everything you want, you're supposed to write down. I'm telling you, man, this is how it works. You know, some rich people don't really have degrees. You just need the word. You need to know what it's saying applied to you. You know why? Because it's a promise of his. He ain't never lied. He always come through. If I was you, I'd try that. If you keep doing what you've been doing, you're going to keep getting what you've been getting. asked God for was to let me eat. Let me sit at the table with the big boys. Take me from this homelessness that I'm in and fill my coffers with, 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 with spoils. You know how much I have today? I have more than I ever thought I'd ever have. God didn't gave me more than I asked for because he got this thing he has called grace. Grace is, I wish, I wish I could buy it. You know, I wish I could buy grace, man. Justice is when you get what you deserve. Mercy is when you don't get what you deserve. He said, but grace is different from both of them. Grace is when you get what you don't deserve. Do you understand that? God has this thing that he passes out called grace. You ever heard old people say, all I want is a little more grace? Because guess what? He passes it out and he gives you things you don't deserve. I do not deserve this life I have. I'm just telling you flat out. The money I make, where I live, what I drive, how I travel, how I vacation, I don't deserve it. I work really hard, but I really don't deserve all this. I don't. I'm telling you flat out, I don't deserve it. But he gave me grace. He let me survive homelessness. He bought me from dark, man. I, I've been out, y'all don't know. I've been in it, man. I'm so grateful that God let me have this life he gave me that I don't even know what to do. What you see today is a boy that come out the bottom who believed in him when it wasn't no sign of me getting over, who kept doing this thing that his mother taught. She said, when it get dark for you and you can't find your way, and boy, I was lost. She said, don't forget to pray. Don't be ashamed to pray. And don't ever be too proud to pray because prayer, prayer changes things. You have got to pray. You know what you ought to get? You ought to, you ought to create your relationship with God. Because if you do that, he gonna put some grace on you. And he gonna give you some things you don't deserve. Then you won't need no education. You won't need to go and complete the program no more. You ain't got to go over here and ask nobody where they hide. God takes you to places that you never ever thought you could you go. I never saw myself here, but that God I serve, he saw me here and he put me here. Now all I'm doing right now is telling you that with God you can make it. I don't know why he had you come to this show. I don't know why I'm telling it to you like this today. But if you ain't ever tried God, listen to me. You should try him. Because he's very available to you right now. He don't love me no more than he love you. If God can pick me up, and you have no idea who you're really looking at, you don't know what I've done. If God can change me, he change anybody in this room. God is good, man.
for our pastoral prayers this morning. I would ask that you would pray for Pastor Tony to feel better, <laughs> to get through, just to, to feel better. And are there any prayers in the community this morning? We ask that, you, oh, go ahead. What is his last name? Jeff asked for prayers for Mike, who is on the urgent list for a heart transplant. We would also ask that you please keep the following in your prayers. LaVon Adams, Randy Antill, Carla Brenner, the Dana Baltnick family, Carol Ann DeFries family, Craig, Grim Craig Griffith family, Jim Hartle, Mindy Kalushi, the Echo Kowalczyk family, Doug Larson and Kathy Hartle, Betsy and Keith Manbeck, Bev Menz and family, the Jeannie Meyer family, Bill Morris, Martha Nornberg family, Rich O'Quinn, Maxine Orton, Janelle Peters, Craig Pooler, the Quammen family, Tasha Rowland and family, Jay Spillum and Diane, Cindy West, John Watoki and Julie Watoki, Chaz Youngblood, our friends in Haiti, our students and teachers, those recovering from Hurricane Ida and those impacted by COVID-19. Now we will enter a time of silent prayer. And remember that prayer changes things. Please join me in the prayer of our Savior. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. With the many gifts we bring and receive from one another, let us share what we have in gratitude for a time of offering.
please join me for the doxology. join me for the prayer of dedication. You hear all the cries of your people, blessed God. You hear all the prayers. And while your will often remains a mystery, grant that our offering today could answer those needs. Take what we bring today and transform your world. Amen. Now join me in the closing hymn, Tis So Sweet to Trust in Jesus. United Methodist Hymnal, page 462. Tis so sweet to trust in Jesus and to take him at his word just to rest upon his promise and to know Saith the Lord, Jesus, Jesus, now I trust him. trust in Jesus, just to trust his cleansing blood, and in simple faith to plunge me neath the healing cleansing plan. Jesus, Jesus, how I trust him, trust him more. Yes, tis sweet to trust in Jesus, just from sin itself to cease, just from Jesus simply taking life and rest and joy and peace. Jesus, Jesus, how I trust him. trust him more. I'm so glad I learned to trust me, trust as Jesus, Savior, friend, and I know that thou art with me, wilt be with me till the end. Jesus, Jesus, I trust him. Jesus, oh, for grace to trust him more. Thank you all for bearing with me today and for your patience. Today and every day, take care of one another, knowing that each of you is God's gift to this community and to the world. Amen.